everyone, it's Kelsey. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I am essentially booked on all platforms and today I'm gonna do the mid-year book freak out tag. Now, what's kind of fun about this is this is the very first video I ever uploaded to YouTube back in 2022, last summer. I started my YouTube channel in July. So I've been on YouTube for almost a year. I kind of started around summer ween of last year. So I'm kind of excited that I'm getting to circle back and redo this video. It'll be a yearly video, but if you are unfamiliar with this tag, this tag is essentially just assessing your reading halfway through the year best for superlatives, all that type of stuff. So we are going to get started. There's 13 questions and I've got little things down at the bottom that will show this to you. I am at a little bit of a different angle because I kind of want to hide the books that I'm going to be featuring. Plus my bookshelf is a hot mess right now as I'm reorganizing it. I have read 60 books so far in 2023. My goal is 100 books realistically knowing I will probably read 120 books. So I'm at halfway. It's about, it's June. So if I read 60 books, I'm well ahead of my goal, even if it is 120 books. So I'm having a pretty okay reading year, I will say. I've read a lot of like middle of the road books and have had a few standouts. So this was pretty easy. The very first question is what's the best book you've read so far this year? And I would say Ask Again Yes is my first favorite book. This is a family saga. I love messy families. This is about two families who are tied together by a traumatic event and then how that event has ramifications through about 40 years. So if you like family sagas, this is one of the best. My runner up is Venco by Sherry Diemeline. I am actually currently reading her, the book before this, which was Empire of the Wild, but She's an indigenous author. This was sent to me by Dog Eared Books as a part of their Dog Pack subscription. And it is just such a quirky, fun book. It's about a coven of witches who are trying to find the missing person in their coven to save essentially witch manatee, humanity, but for witches. <laughs> and it's just a really fun road trip, found family. There's a lot of queer and indigenous representation. I just had such a fun time reading this. So those are probably my two favorite books of the year so far. All right, the next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year. And I haven't really read a lot of sequels. I really, I've only read like some first in series, but I would say The Duke Gets Even by Joanna Shoup would be one of my favorite sequels or Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca, which was the next in the um, Renaissance Fair series. I haven't read a lot of series this year. If I have, it's like the first book in a series. So that's an interesting stat. The next question is a new release you haven't read yet, but you want to. I've got quite a few. <laughs> Goodness gracious, do I have a few. So I've got a ton on NetGalley, but I will say one of the new releases I'm really excited about is Everything's Fine by Cecilia Rabus. I'm also very excited to read Saturday Night at the Late Night Supper Club by J. Ryan Straddle. Stradell? Straddle? And then I have Chain Gang All-Stars. I have quite a few new releases that I'm actually really excited for. So Chain Gang All-Stars, also Paper Names by Susie Luo. This really isn't a hard one to come up with, right? I need to read The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. A Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo will be coming out. I've got plenty of books that fit that bill. The next question is, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So that would be Knockout by Sarah McLean. So a couple other ones I'm pretty excited for would be The Sun in the Void, which actually comes out in July, The Housekeepers, Big Little Spells by Hazel Beck, Family Lore, and Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. So I don't know. I don't know a ton of releases that are coming out in the fall, but I'll get to them when I get to them. And then the next question is your biggest disappointment. And I would say by far it's been Ruth Ware's The It Girl. I just had really high expectations for that book and for Ruth Ware because I know how beloved she is and it just really fell flat for me. I'm going to keep reading her books, but I just, it wasn't, it just didn't do much for me. It took me forever to read. Okay, so for biggest surprise, the first one, and this is a hot take and really funny, if you know, you know. Comfort Me With Apples, my friend Lena's absolute favorite book. This is a novella. It's really hard to describe, but I really liked it. 
And then another book that really surprised me was The Last Quintista. I had to read this for a book club and it's a middle grade novel about earth ending and they send like a fleet of humans to a different planet to ensure humanity. Really beautifully written, made me feel a lot of feelings. I would say Venko probably fits for this as well. Um, some other books that really surprised me would be The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Like it just was so much fun and it exceeded my expectations. I had very low expectations for it because it was a thriller. But in the end, I just really, really liked it. And then favorite new debut or new to you author would have to be Ann Patchett. That's a pretty easy one for me. I read These Precious Days by her for a book club and it just wrecked me. And then I'm in the middle, almost done with The Dutch House by her. And I just love her voice. I love her writing style. She's very literary fiction. Her writing is just so beautiful. So Ann Patchett, definitely my surprise author. Newest fictional crush. Ooh, I don't even know if I have one this year. Let's see here. You know what? Um, Connor from The True Love Experiment. He's such a cinnamon roll and just so perfect. Also, Jack from Love Theoretically, I think would fit that bill. I read Forget Me Not by Julie Soto and Ruby Spencer's Whisker, Whisker Year. Ruby Spencer's Whiskey Year. And that was pretty, like the both heroes in those were really steamy. I would definitely say probably Jack or Connor were both just perfection in a book form. My newest favorite character. I would probably have to go with Perry from Warrior Girl Unearthed. If you know Angeline Bully, she writes very strong teenage characters, like more new adult, but who are just bold and proud of who they are and like don't compromise amidst hard things. So I would say Perry. I would also say Fizzy from The True Love Experiment. She was wonderful too. She's just a lot of fun. And then the next book is a book that made you cry. I would definitely say Four Treasures of the Sky by I think it's Jenny Zhang. This book, there's not one happy moment in this book and it's about a Chinese woman who is essentially sex trafficked or human trafficked into the United States and like the horrific things that happened in the early 1900s, uh, the Chinese Exclusion Act, just all of these things that make her life so unbearably hard. It's fiction, but it's based on true events and it is just a devastating novel. It's so good, but it is just so dark, so heavy, all the triggers, but something I think about to this day. I listen to it on audio. Like it is just the most depressing book, but it's also so good. If you like historical fiction that's really hard hitting about something that's not World War II, I would definitely recommend Four Treasures in the Sky. All right, and then a book that made you happy since we went from here to there. Oh wow, I've had so many. Of late, The True Love Experiment. It was just such a fun book and it made me so happy. I just wanted to like sit in that world forever. I had so, so much fun with it. The True Love Experiment, it was so fantastic. It just is so feel good. It was steamy, a book to sink your teeth in, a great beginning to summer reading. I just really recommended it and it made me so, so, so happy. The most beautiful book you've received or bought so far. Mine is, I subscribed to a Lumacrate for a while, I'm trying to not make a mess. And I got the Song of Silver Flame Like Night. So here's just the cover, like ugh, sprayed edges. It's just a gorgeous book. The inside's got like beautiful end pages. It's just a really pretty edition. So that's probably my prettiest book I got. Um, an epic new fantasy duology inspired by Chinese mythology. So um, that sounds really great. And then what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I've got quite a few. So of course my go-to answer is going to be book of the month books, right? Another book I want to read by the end of the year is Big Little Lies. I would like to get entirely caught up on Louise Penny's series. I have two of those. I um have I want to read The Essex Serpent because there's going to be there is a TV show on Apple TV. Yeah. So I want to read that. I still need to read I still need to read all the Lord of the Rings books. Uh that's just like more for me. And then the Emily of New Moon series. I also would like to get to 80% net galley percentage. That probably won't happen, but it'd be cool if it did. I just want to make more of a dent on my net galley and not request as many. So I would say that's a good reading goal. But in a previous video, I said I'm not going to make TBRs for the next few months because I kind of want to see what that does to my reading and how 
I mood read. I just kind of want to see like where my true reading desires lie. So less what do I need to read this year and more what do I want to read this year is kind of the focus for the back half of the year. Uh, this is a tag. I'm not going to tag anybody, but if you want to record the video, please do consider yourself tagged. I will put all the questions in the comments, but I am so excited to see what the back half of the year is. I'm also excited to see what YouTube brings in the next year, uh, because this was my first video that I filmed. So we'll see. I am at like almost 600 subscribers. My goal for a year was to be a thousand. I probably won't hit that, but that's okay. I'm just excited because this community has been really, really fun and kind of fun to go full circle and see how far I've come and like know how far I can go. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just excited for the potential on this channel to connect with more bookish friends, just all of that. It will be so fun. I'm super excited to continue to read alongside all of y'all and get recommendations and give recommendations. If you're here, I'm so thankful for you. Subscribe, like, whatever. It helps me grow my channel and it just makes me so happy to know people are watching and that I have people who read like me and stuff. So anyways, this has been so fun. Really excited, I've said this already, but really excited for the back half of the year. And until the next video, everybody, I'll see you later.